Hello, and welcome to our eighth Digital Health Talk Hanover. Our topic today, follow-up care goes digital. Our Digital Health Talk Hanover is a format in which we would like to connect healthcare stakeholders with each other, such as uh, politicians, businesses, researchers, and startups. My name is Leslie Plön, and I am Project Director for Industry Development at Hanover Impulse. After a stay in hospital, the therapeutic success often fizzles out during patients' everyday life. For a long-term therapy success, however, it is essential and necessary that the patients also keep going on with their exercises, which they have acquired and the skills that they have learned in rehabilitation. Our guests today, Charles Michelson, CEO and founder from the Norwegian startup Flow Technologies, who wants to close this gap with the digital communication platform FlowZone, and Professor Dr. Andreas Martens, senior physician from the Medizinische Hochschule Hanover, working on the cardiology ward, and now, since today, accompanying his all his heart patients with the digital communication platform from Flowzone with a study. A warm welcome to both of you. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Hello. Bef Charles Michelson, before we um, talk about the study with the Medizinische Hochschule Hanover, can you tell us what uh, features does the Flowzone or Flow Technologies have to digitally support the patients and the healthcare professionals? Yes, Leslie, I can do that. So um, we have built a secure digital platform that connects uh, healthcare uh, professionals with their patients and uh, enables digital follow-up, both uh, before uh, treatment and after treatment and in rehabilitation. And what uh, the reason why we built this was, uh, as you mentioned, we see that patients are struggling to comply with their therapy plans and struggling to change their lifestyle, uh, even though they have uh, gotten a, an indication that is uh, potentially life-threatening. So um, our platform is a secure digital tool, cross-platform, so you can use it on web, app, or uh, smart, smart devices. And uh, your therapist can follow you up with their treatment plans and um, we believe and we see that patients succeed and comply uh, in a higher rate uh, to their plans uh, using our tool. So the, the joint study with the Medizinische Hochschule isn't your um, first um, practice in, in German or with the German healthcare market. Um, you have also gained experience in the German or with the German um, pension insurance. What uh, feedback did you get from um, patients and doctors? Um, today, our service is being used in rehabilitation, uh, both uh, during rehabilitation and after rehabilitation. And the feedback that we are getting uh, from the um, healthcare professionals is that it uh, simplifies their work. It makes it easier for them to connect with their patients, to share educational material, to share interactive plans, to follow up their patients, to see that they are complying. And the patients say that it's fun and engaging and motivational, and, it's, and it uh, brings them closer to their uh, caretakers, and it helps them bridge the gap and comply to their plans when they are at home. Professor Andreas Martens, your study starts, uh, or your study with uh, Flowzone starts as of today. What objectives or what results do you hope to achieve? Now, actually, right now we have to talk about a little bit about what is what is the mode of 
taking care of those patients today and what we're trying to, uh, to achieve with the new system. So right now, communication, of course, is by phone or by, by on paper. Um, and, and because the, the pathway has become much faster in the past 20 years on which the patients are treated in our system, so the, the, also the, the, the speed of information has to be increased. So there are three aspects um, that are very important for our patients. So the more more knowledge the patient has before he goes into a treatment, the better his outcomes are. So one of one part of this system is get get information fast to the patient and easy to the patient. The second is if we if we manage to improve the physical and mental fitness of those patients before they enter treatment and teach them how to manage their physical and mental fitness after treatment, also the outcomes are much better. And one important thing, and Charles just said that, is follow-up. So right now the follow-up of our patients is typically organized over the healthcare professionals, meaning the rehabilitation doctors or the GPs or the cardiologists. And we get feedback from them if something special arises. So when, when the patient leaves the hospital, we don't have a fixed and let's say organized uh, feedback loop and follow-up loop for our patients and it's specifically not directly to the patient. So there is no direct contact. So these are all the things we want to improve with the system uh, that's been, let's say, invented by Flow Technologies. Okay, so um, you you uh, told me that your um, research with Flow Technologies is funded by the German Research Foundation and is supposed to last for three years. What is your practical approach? Yes, see, actually, what we what we do is, of course, we have to compare three kind of, or let's say, the standard treatment right now and two other treatment strategies. Meaning, we improve the information we we uh, get for our patients by, let's say, standard procedures, giving them uh, paper information, talking to them, and then a third group would be not standard care, but um, the same treatment as we do it today, including the digitalized information system and rehabilitation system. So we have three groups that are, um, are compared, the standard care today, uh, the, let's say, uh, today paper-based care and telephone care and the digital care. And we compare these three, and when we manage to prove that the digital way is very beneficial for the system, of course, then we hope that we get a funding over the healthcare system. And right now we're very grateful and happy that we get the funding by the innovation fund of the German government. Yes, definitely. You also said there are um, existing therapy plans in, in the app to, um, for example, exercises for mobilization or uh, for lung function. Are these exercises tailored to each individual patient in the app? Um, first, it's very important that every patient know these exercises. So in a way, they are not individualized, but how often they do them and how how they do them uh, and what it, it proves to um, benefit for, for them. So what happens in each patient is an individualized, individualized approach. So we have partners in sports medicine, Professor Tikbo here in the MAHA uh, is one of the experts um, researching about uh, rehabilitation, also about prevention and, and cardiovascular medicine. So we work together for for them and they build up these plans for the patients. So the, the way they do it or what they do is pretty standard, but uh, the specific uh, protocol for each patient is individual. Okay, that sounds um, like a huge amount of data that uh, we are collecting. Is uh, that confirmed with the data regulations in Germany, um, Charles, um, Professor Martins? I can, I can answer that. Um, our service uh, depends on us uh, protecting the data in the in the best possible way. And if you're going to work with uh, uh, healthcare uh, data, then you have to comply with the rules and regulations of uh, EU and have the highest standard. So we uh, we comply to all the rules and regulations, and we see that it's a moving target. This is a this is a, a, a debated uh, field. But it's extremely important to comply, to take care of the data in a good way. Uh, but at the same time, to secure that we're able to deliver a use, usable service that is, uh, that is easy to use both for the, the doctors and nurses and for the patients. 
yeah, usability still has to be given. Yes. Um, Professor Martins, if um, the patients are able to communicate 24-7 um, with this app, how is it possible during clinical everyday life with um, maybe 14 hour shifts to um, answer patients? No, actually, we have a dedicated study team right now for this kind of study. So if, if, this, if, if this kind of technique comes into normal clinical practice, of course, you need healthcare providers that manage this kind of flow of data, of course. The second thing is you have to concentrate on what it's, what's important for treating these patients for uh, managing complications, for example. So it's also a question about whether you ask an open question for the patients or whether the patient can just text you something or whether you um, have que specific questions for the patient that he has to answer every single day in a very easy and organized form. And then you get very um, consistent data you can take uh, and it's easier to manage those and, and interpret in terms of whether the patient is doing good or not. Uh, but you're completely right. It's also something that we have to manage um, how much information do we get and how uh, um, are we uh, using this information? Yes, exactly. Um, I imagine your um, patients have an average age of maybe 75 years. Um, Charles, uh, how is your experience so far? Do the patients um, have the skills to handle this app? Uh, yes, our experience is very is very uh, good so far, and uh, most of our patients are uh, actually elderly uh, uh, that use our app. And um, um, the usability in our service is obviously extremely important because uh, um, we obviously want as many as patients as possible to be able to transition to a digital uh, patient pathway. So that's why we provide both, not only an app, but also uh, accessibility via your PC. So if you um, need something on a larger screen or you're used to using, using a computer, you can easily access uh, all your material and your plans on a, on a computer with a bigger screen. So we, what we see is that uh, people who are used to using digital tools find our service easy to use. People who are not at all used to using any digital tools obviously will, will fall, fall out of our scope. Okay, so the usability, not only for the healthcare professionals, but also obviously um, for the older group of the patients as well. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, in your opinion, are the key advantages of digital aftercare compared to the current practice in Germany? Um, Professor Martins already um, said a couple of um, aspects, but what, what, in your opinion, do you think are key advantages? Um, on the healthcare provider side, um, there is a great need for tools that uh, are efficient and that uh, simplify workflow because there is always a pressure on healthcare uh, providers. Uh, so if we can help them deliver better quality um, uh, services to their patients, easier communication flow, flow more data, uh, easier, uh, easier standard of practice, that's what we are trying to achieve on that side. Uh, for the patients, we, we believe that including patients more uh, into their treatment plan and making them more accountable uh, and bringing them closer and also giving them um, uh, tighter follow-up, a closer follow-up uh, throughout uh, a longer period of their uh, journey will increase their compliance, which we see uh, makes a huge impact on the, their quality of life and their health, health literacy, the understanding of their own health. Okay, um, question to both of you. What wishes uh, do you both perhaps have for the experts that are watching? Um, do you have, are you in need of any other co cooperations um, or help perhaps? Should I start? So I, um, 
Yeah, actually, from a, from a physician's perspective, these kind of techniques and digital apps are very um, very helpful. But of course, we are not the experts in in implementing them. And uh, if even if we have the idea about uh, what we want to put into the system, meaning the content of the system, we need help, for example, with photographers, videographers, um, journalists to kind of what we know about our treatment uh, pathways um, to put this in as an as a good information to consume it by the patient into these kind of systems. So this is very helpful. Uh, and this is where I see other companies can come in uh, to join this, uh, this effort to improve this uh, patient care digitally. We have a Norwegian startup on the one side and a German institution on the other side. What do you both find special about this cooperation? Maybe I can say, say a few Feel words. Free. Um, well, just to answer on the touch on the, the former question, uh, I would what I would like to see uh, is more uh, healthcare organizations, hospitals, rehab institutions. Um, we're willing to try out uh, new services to push the boundaries of innovation. And I really admire uh, MHH's uh, uh, position here. They are willing to um, take on quite a big workload to improve uh, an important uh, part of their uh, patient pathway. And this is, uh, this, they are leading in innovation, uh, testing out new systems, um, and I would like to see more, um, more healthcare organizations trying out new technology because before you've tried it out, you don't get the organizational learnings that you need to take the next step uh, when it comes to innovating on your own practice. So that was the last question. Uh, when it comes to... Um, working together with Dr. Martens and his team. Um, I think that uh, the culture uh, seems very familiar. Um, so it seems, it's, it, I, th I think it seems very easy to get started with uh, uh, cooperation. And uh, the, the culture in Norway and in Germany is very um, yeah, similar. That sounds well, I, very good, and it sounds from... like a, a fruitful, fruitful um, cooperation. Sorry to interrupt you. Is. No problem. Uh, it's 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 actually true. Now, what I like about this kind of an international cooperation is that we that we keep this this idea on a, on a possibly global level. So um, we're used to go to congresses and, and talk about our innovations um, on a global scale. This is something we know as a university and many others do that too. Uh, but also getting the, the, the partners together on a, um, on a global scale is very interesting. I really like the idea that this is something that you could theoretically next month implement in, in other countries as well, because it's, it's easy to, uh, to do that in other countries too. Okay, um, that leads me to the next question. Um, how does the money flow? So we know um, the, the study is funded by the um, German Research Foundation. Um, projects from Flow Technology also can be funded by the German insurance um, pension. Um, where do you see for the future um, the funding for digital follow-up offerings? Maybe I take that question. So the, of course, for the for the German funding system and ed, any other funding system uh, in healthcare, it's important that the that the players give you the money if if you prove that the benefits are there for the patient. So in most of these instances, even if we invent a new surgical technique, um, as university clinics, you have to prove that this is something that's good for the patient. And if you do that, then typically these, um, these ideas and treatments are implemented into the funding system of healthcare insurance. Uh, it's, it's a complicated process, of course. It, it takes a while. So um, until those fundings are achieved, we have to work uh, with funding from, from other partners and from the government as well, um, from Norway as well as Germany. So we're happy to have that. And then we have to get our data together and then we can apply 
for, let's say, regular funding through the healthcare system. Charles, would you like to add? Yes, I would like to add. Um, I think that um, it's also admirable that the DRV, the Deutsche Rentenversicherung, are now testing out new ways of, uh, of providing their rehabilitation services. So they are, um, they are testing out uh, a digital version of their aftercare program. And, and they are then pushing boundaries and creating uh, funding streams, reimbursement streams, uh, that make it possible for healthcare providers to try out new uh, therapy practices. So I think that we need to see more insurance companies, uh, healthcare providers, trying new models, maybe in small scale first, to get the experience into their organization and into the healthcare professionals' uh, organizations, so that they can get the experiences and, um, and the learnings. And then, then they can scale it. But uh, without trying uh, and uh, getting the first-hand experience, uh, we will the innovation will go very slow. I may have a comment on that because you're completely right. So as I said, you need partners to fund this right now. These partners mm -hmm. are sometimes also insurance companies. So it's not that the insurance companies are blocking away our ideas. So some mm -hmm. of them, of course, have budgets for research and improving their patient uh, care that they um, have uh, funding for. Mm -hmm. um, I have one last question. Uh, the new digital offering is designed to help people change their lifestyle on long-term basis. However, data um, shows that after uh, one year of um, in or after one year in rehabilitation, patients come back home. Um, only half of the people are still physically active or only um, a third of the people smoke less or even only uh, or even still three quarters of people are overweight. So what is your uh, long term prognosis? Can we really close uh, this gap with digital services? I'll, I'll try that first. Um, our long term term goal is to uh, follow patients throughout the continuum of care. And, um, and we focus on patients who have uh, entered uh, into a, um, a indication period where they are, have become sick and they will need healthcare um, follow up the rest of their lives. So we believe that by uh, enabling the patient to be followed up and to follow their own health, um, uh, health uh, development uh, digitally over time, is the only way to uh, secure a good, uh, a good uh, con continu continuity for the patients. So uh, we are looking at uh, bridging the gap between healthcare providers as well as bridging the gap between the patient and the, their healthcare uh, professionals. So in this case, uh, we are looking at the, bridging the gap between MHH, the treatment there, the operation, and the rehabilitation institution. And then bridging the gap between the rehabilitation institution and the patient coming home. And then looking at uh, connecting them with their GP. Yes, I, I think just to comment from my side, you, you are referring to the adherence of a strategy or a treatment plan for those patients. And it's, an, it's, it's a known issue for, for many decades. And right now we know that, that over the last 20 years, for example, organized programs where patients are followed up on a fixed fixed rate and fixed dates are called by their physicians, uh, for example, as a follow-up. These patients do better. And, and having a digital system makes this easier to it, that the patients adhere to their protocols. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a question of discipline. So they, they need to be follow-up actively called or have to have a message on their iPhone please send us the following information today. As we all know, we are not sick, 
but even we know that discipline is something that we have to take care uh, take care of, and that it's the same in medicine as well. So if these patients adhere to their therapy plans because they have a digital system that remembers them to do that, that's uh, that's very useful. It's probably much much easier and cheaper than the uh, now organized programs are doing it. Yes, thank you. To sum it all up uh, for this morning. Um, we can basically say that uh, digital follow-up care um, helps to keep a long-term therapy success upright, but also helps um, close or reduce the lack of support for people living in rural areas. And last but not least, what um, you just said, um, make patients realize they are responsible for their own health, um, help them to self-empowerment and make them to managers of their own health. Thank you so much to both of you for being here today and for letting us participate in your work and your knowledge. Thank you to both of you. Thanks. Thank you, Lacey. Also, thank you to the audience for joining us today. If you um, have any questions or um, would like to contact any of our guests or us today, feel free, do not hesitate, um, write us an email. Our digital health talks will continue this year. We have the next one under the topic gamification in the healthcare sector. My colleague Melissa Jung will be moderating it on the 29th of April. Feel free to register and um, I hope uh, you all have a nice weekend here in the snowy Hanover today and um, enjoy your weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.